oil for immersion uh, for minimum for maximum efficiency is a home in orbit. Does anybody know what a home in orbit is where it's tangential to the orbit on both sides instead of you know taking off at a big angle? Um, that's where you use the least fuel. <coughs> um, and the typical profile is that you do one of these orbits from Earth to Mars, when Earth and Mars happen to be at both ends when you get there. Um, then you have to stay there for like a year before things line up to the point where you can do the same orbit back to Earth. These guys were going up, they were staying six weeks and coming home, which means that they're paying a much higher fuel bill than they have. Oh yeah, they're, they're fed, that gravity ball's a bitch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love the, uh, the transport ship and, and you know, the, uh, you know, the modules and the advanced stocking and all that, you know, that was great. I loved that. Um, you know, from that point of view, there wasn't a whole lot that was really baloney. The one thing that got me in the movie, which was not the case with the books, is when he's making the big trek from the first base to the next one where he's going to hijack the, uh, uh, the lift module, they showed him out there laying on the ground underneath the rover. Ground that is at minus 20 degrees. <laughs> They, they tried to make yeah they tried about, to, yeah they tried the, to the, make, the surface temperature of Mars desert. at the at the at the ground level is about uh, two hundred and ten Kelvin yeah yeah <laughs> it is it is colder than anything you can possibly imagine on its warmest day yeah he is not going to be laying down on that ground no. hiding himself from the sun you know it's just yeah. not the Mojave guys. no in fact he probably wants to be sitting out on out going hello sun <laughs> paint your suit black and get warm. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. He wants to be inside with that radioactive doodah. That was right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, in the book, they make a much bigger deal of the fact that he's got a solid core nuclear reactor, you know, mm -hmm. a, a transparticle device that's power, that he's getting his electricity from, but it's also his heat source. Mm -hmm. you know, And it doesn't work without, because that's what's keeping his water wet and <laughs> things like that, which is brilliantly thought through in the book, mm -hmm. but the, there was just no time in the movie right. yeah, to spend they, time building it. you got to forgive it. movies a little bit. Yeah, you only got two hours to work. Well, well, no, I mean one of the things about modern narrative storytelling mm -hmm. is they typically have no problem adding captions with other information, whether it's the time or where a person right. is. All they had to do is, with that, just put a thing with the temperature on the screen. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a. I mean, there are ways around it. Yeah. There are ways they could have done it if they felt inspired. <coughs> Really, to the narrative of the story, we're we're all geeked about it because we're looking at the science sure. and the engineering stuff. But to the narrative of the story, it's meaningless. Yeah, <clears throat> it has nothing really to do with his survival journey, other than it's taken as it's it's taken as a waving of hands and read that he he worked this out. Yeah, uh, quickie. Uh, one one thing I was forgive my ignorance, mm -hmm. but one thing that you mentioned uh, that was mentioned there is that if they went out, if they was outside without the suit. They said he, he mentioned that he would implode. Is that correct? Uh, it's a wrong word. Uh, yeah, not the trite trick. You would not want to be bare skin on the surface of Mars with a you know with a breeze. With, yeah. <laughs> um, um, the, 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 the air pressure on Mars is very. <coughs> it's not. I mean, obviously, it's not lunar low. It's not vacuum, right. but it's not healthy. It's not a healthy level of, of right. air pressure. Well, as in you would you die within five minutes. Yeah. yeah, you know, you would you would sublimate. It'd be like at being at a hundred thousand feet. You know, you know, guys who fly the U2s at a hundred thousand feet mm -hmm. wear pressure suits for a reason mm -hmm. because their blood would boil away. Because even though they there's still there's still atmosphere around them, there's not a lot of atmosphere around them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what would get you with, with the with the the air. Even if you were you know, assuming you could still breathe, which wouldn't be as big an issue um, as say stepping out onto the moon, but. I don't know what would kill you first, the temperature or the or the your 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 bodily fluids sublimating out from the low air pressure. You couldn't the breathe. Both, you plus the fact that no matter how low the air pressure, there's not a lot of oxygen. In there's it. not. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, there's not. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you need pressure to. with oxygen in order to breathe. That's why people who fly. Right. Right. There. I used to fly gliders. I never done it, but there are people who fly up to like thirty-five thousand feet. And yeah. You start, out after ways. about after, after about seventeen thousand feet, you start running out of air. You need pressure to you need pressure to make an oxygen. You need right. pressure on this. Yeah. Not just oxygen to be able to because push it in. As you're yeah. As you, you go to inhale, pressure, without air pressure, pressure to be your 
will you not know, get into your when, you know think about it when you breathe you're creating a vacuum inside of your body and it's drawing in air well if there's no air pressure here it's not going to get drawn in you can't mm -hmm. create enough vac you, you can't create enough vacuum to pull the air in it might also do something to your lungs like collapse them so oh yeah it would be bad the pressure from your <laughs> this is what we would call <clears throat> bad now if going going from the one end of polonium to the other um, these are all kind of subtle points, you know, yeah. and you really have to kind of know something about what's going on before it, you, know, you, you start being able to pick nits. Um, there was another movie that came out recently that it was so bad that even Scarlett Johansson being in it didn't get me to go see it. Lucy. Lucy. Oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, that, the old thing about, you know, only use 10% of your brain. Yeah, it's like, you know, okay, you only use 10% of your legs. But a magic chemical will make you run like this flash. You know, it, it strains credulity that somewhere a mutation wouldn't happen that would let you have all this access all the time. And if you didn't, if you couldn't use it, why did it develop? Yes, you, you don't use 100% of your brain all the time. Your brain works in little compartments and well, moves around. Well, yes, the guy who said that originally, it was back when... There's a lot of the brain that they were, they had no obvious function. Right. And that's all been filled they in. They didn't have MRIs. That, and stuff they didn't then. have PET scans. They didn't have. They only had external uh, readers, you know, the EK, you know, EEG stuff where you're, you're measuring like this. And, and, and people hadn't had the interesting kinds of injuries that yeah, take yeah. out a yeah. little piece. And then just keep in, keep in your mind, suppose we used all of our neurons at once, our systems would fail. Yeah, you can't, you know, you can't that's, process that's, them. Yeah, that's too much CPU. You know, all your CPU time is taken up right. by all the zeros turning into one. Yeah, you ever see your computer go into buffer mode because you've, you've used all your processing, you know, processing power and that's memory? That, yeah. yeah. Well, it, and, and the brain well, overheats as well. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's and exactly. your brain does heat up by use, by the way. Yes, yeah. the, brain, the brain is built to handle information. If you try to take a 223 phase line, and control it by running it through this. <laughs> Put 12 volts through that. You're going to get smoke. Yeah. Put 12 volts through that. You're going to get smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I've done it. <laughs> I was trying to wire it into the car. I can't help that it fell across the wrong leads. <laughs> if the smoke escapes, it stops working. When the magic smoke escapes to the computer, yes. the computer stops working. Exactly. But even more than that, just because you're using, even if you could use 10 times as much capacity of your brain, it doesn't explain how you can do telekinesis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, there's still, there's still, <laughs> there's just some not, possibilities not, regardless even of the, how much of your brain you're not. There, there's not even the smallest report, that we, we, not even the smallest possibility of the concept of something like telekinesis. So let's and, not even. And wouldn't that be so useful? Oh, oh yeah. telekinesis. Yes. Uh, yeah. Somebody pointed out that if, if psychic powers exist, then they must be of no selective benefit whatsoever. Like Larry Niven. Yeah. Larry Niven. Okay. okay. Good. I couldn't any, remember the source. Any sign of powers, if they do exist in human beings, must add no functionality to day-to-day -day living, else evolution would, would, would glorify them. Yes. So even if you had it, it must not help you in your life in any way, shape, or form. It's it unfortunate. So, but that's really a pity because I like watching Scarlett Johansson movies. I, well, so does, I saw does the movie. That, In fact, I've watched it twice for that it, very reason. Because it doesn't exist, does that mean it's deselective? No, that no. You know, no what what it means is that if if it's real, in other words, if neural tissue can produce those effects, then it has no beneficial effect, or somebody would have accidentally mutated that. Well, I would say it would it would go to the opposite. It would cause you to have problems, and you'd be less likely to survive. Well, that's true. We, we yeah. have no we have no proof that it isn't detrimental. Right. It could be that yes, this person has psychic ability. Unfortunately. If they do it, they stroke out. They stroke yeah. out, or it, 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 it leads to their, <laughs> their premature pre, uh, pre reproduction uh, death. And, yes. I, and I know this goes kind of against the concept of bolonium. There is one other possibility, though. Mm. We have the power. It's just that it's positioned in a place where we haven't figured out how to use it yet. We haven't learned the stupid human trick that lets it activate. I mean, it's, for, I mean, for it's a small or not, not small I mean, but non-zero chance of that. Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. Strict, I mean, because strictly speaking, and this is <coughs> something where I have a little bit of extra expertise. One of the things that I do with people is I do hypnosis, and we had in order to understand the things that go into helping a person get to a trance state was not well understood up until, historically speaking, very recently. 
course. Okay, the, you know, we, you know, we could still crack the hood open, right. and, and people had been doing that. Shamans had been doing it on a hit or miss basis for a long time. But to do what we do, we had to learn a whole new set of skills in order to use that. Well, it may be necessary. It, it, hypnosis only glorifies the fact that people are sheep. And you, you, you're not giving them permission to cooperate without having to hold back. So, but let's not get into that. Let's 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 well, stick more towards the uh, the storytelling that, yeah. side. Um, so, what else happened this year that was? Um, do you really want to do it this year? Because you 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 made a claim that you could help justify things. Well, that's true. I did. Although so, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I, that's a, that seems like a tough task. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we have to bring up more examples. Well, so. the one, though, specifically, the one I'm thinking, it's not from right. this last year. That's so. okay. Charlie Strauss. Yes. One love, of love Charlie Strauss. Terrific uh, yeah. writer. If you haven't read Charlie Strauss, go read Charlie Strauss. Yes. Or follow him on, online because his day-to-day -day writings are also highly entertaining. Yes. Um, Very in, entertaining. Yeah. yeah. In one of his universes, the S. Chiton universe. Um, he has all kinds of ways that you can dink with relativity. And one of the things that he does is that, you know, he uses a quantum entanglement, which anytime you hear the word quantum, you know some really good bullshit is about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he says, okay, so you, you take a whole bunch of particles and entangle them, which apparently is simple to do, they just kind of have to be near each other, and then you, you Put them in a box, and as long as you transport them slower than light, so that they don't, you know, break their reference frame, um, then if you talk into it, it'll convert into a signal, and bits will flip from up to down, and at the receiver, it'll suddenly, it'll, you know, you'll see things uh, flipping, and you can read the message, which is great if it worked like that, but it doesn't. No. When you entangle it, you've got two particles. Which one's up? Which one's down? You can't tell until you measure it. And all that all that happens with entanglement is that even if no matter how far apart they are, if you look at one and it happens to collapse the function in an upstate, you know that the other one, when it collapses, is, is going to come out in the downstate. But nothing changes that you can look at. Once you look at it, you've destroyed the entanglement. Right. Um, and you can't use it to trans transmit information because you can't compare them until after they've both happened, and the only way to get that information to say what happened when you did it is by light speed. So, you know, it just doesn't work. But it sounds great. It's wonderful balonium because nobody has looked that deeply to what entanglement means. It just means that things do things at a great distance. Um, Sir, I think I think you uh, you gave me an escape hatch in the, the first way you uh, introduced this, which was in one of his universes. Tectons, <laughs> 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 we call yeah, them. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes, yeah, so we can always slide into the it's a universe where physics works differently. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in a lot of these, you kind of have to. Well, it's like, anyway, he only wrote two novels in it. In, in the old in the old days, we always talked about, oh yeah, we're not going to talk about Star Trek, and people, are, you know, I, I just always wait for the guy who brings up the, like, well, what's the problem with the Star Trek universe? All that stuff kind of works. It sort of kind of works on paper. The problem is there's not enough energy. There's not enough energy in the Star Trek universe to do half the shit that they have them doing. Mm -hmm. And the people say, whoa, but they they have antimatter. It's like, we know exactly how much energy we get out of an antimatter. In fact, there are people at this con who are the world's greatest makers of antimatter. They can tell you anything you want to know about it. For the microscopic m amounts of antimatter that mankind has ever isolated. You know, we've never, um, um, what was the, um, the second of the Dan Brown, you know, the, 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 the church mysteries with angels the and angels and demons. And the whole premise of angels and demons is they had these, two amazing glowing canisters of antimatter that they were going to, to open up at the Vatican to destroy, you know, that part of the world or, you know, mm -hmm. you know layers of baloney. And, of course, all the scientists are just laughing and laughing and laughing because it's like, well, for one thing, there isn't that much antimatter in the known, in, in, the, in the viewable galaxy. There's not that much antimatter that we can isolate. And the second of all, you can't carry it around. Oh, or it's in a magnetic field. You need a building the size of Fermi Lab to contain this much oh, yeah. of it at an accelerated rate to keep it from supplementing back into the universe. You're not going to walk around in milk canisters. Come on! 
That's the that's the kind of stuff that we love. <coughs> it's so bad, it's bad. It's it's horrible. Well, I mean, if you want to go there, I mean, probably as far as I can tell, the the biggest mother load of grade A bolonium that I found mm -hmm. uh, is in, and the, you know, you're gonna you're gonna grow in just here. You, the words Marvel. Comics no, universe. no, no, no. Comic, comic, comic physics is a totally different subject. Right, <laughs> right. but this one is Ant Man. Mm -hmm. This is a movie. This is this is a movie whose science is so bad that they contradict their own premises right in the process of doing the movie. Oh yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, no. My favorite is is um, Michael Douglas's character walking around with a T eighty on his keychain that can somehow be re expanded back to full size and mass. <laughs> and it's a, yet it's it's the weight that he could carry on the keychain of his. Well, ex exactly. Like, where did the mask go? Especially when they say in the in the movie itself that it doesn't change the mass. It's just <laughs> bringing the you know it's just bringing the That's atoms together. Yeah, let's to let's make it all. let's let my, my, uh, Fred Hembeck, who's a wonderful cartoonist who who does cartoons in the in the in the, the comic book universe, once did a picture of here's Spider Man, and he's under a bus. The bus is on the ground on its wheels, and he's buried in the concrete up to his, his armpits. He goes, "Great! Finally, a writer understands physics." <laughs> <laughs> in the comic book universe, uh, does anyone is everyone familiar with the term that H. G. Wells coined about swallowing porcupines? When you he said, "When you write fantastic stories, it's like the the, the impossibilities that you feed your writer or your your readers are like swallowing porcupines. It's not something that people want to do, and it can be an unpleasant experience." You just don't want to, you have to make sure you don't feed them too many porcupines to the point where they protest. So it's like, okay, and of course one of the great, you know, so, so in the comic book universe, we accept a certain amount of, of, of porcupines, that a man can, res, you know, be invulnerable and resist bullets, that he can, he can somehow <laughs> right. climb walls. We'll, we'll buy that for a good story. You know, you, you have to turn your brain off a little right. bit. You have to accept that impossibility. Um, but it's always fun to even within that. So of course, mm -hmm. If you think about Spider-Man, okay, Spider-Man, we accept the fact that Spider-Man is strong enough to lift a bus. Okay, no problem. The problem is his feet are only this big. And now we're talking, you know, you know surface yeah. area. So now you've got the entire weight of a, of a, of a GM-built bus spread out on two, you know, two, you know, mm -hmm. Is the surface two square feet of, of pressure? First by, yeah. by square feet. Are, are, how many Pascals? How many Pascals of energy? Although, yeah. Yeah. arguably, the... Um, the uh, what's it called? This the same pressure applied to the bottom of the bus is likely to just well, bend the bend yeah. The that, see, itself. that would be the fight. Of, that would be the physics fight. Whether he gets driven up through the bus or the bus drives him down through the ground. I guess it depends on the surface he's standing on. A good, a good well built roadway could probably put up with you know yeah. that yeah, well, pressure think, on it. Yeah, but the think, bottom, yeah. the, the sheet metal at the bottom of the bus, yeah. it's like. So he's sitting inside the bus going, I mean, uh, I mean, really. It all depends on where he grabs it, too. I mean, if he's grabbing it by parts of the undercarriage that are normally moving, he might be able to those, have, been, the those have been first, and What's so like, it's... We, we would accept, if we were waiting in a comic and you saw Superman pick up the corner of a building and lift a skyscraper, you would have, you would have no problem going, yeah, of course Superman can lift a skyscraper. The building can't be lifted by the corner. You're just going to peel the facade off of it, yeah. and it's going to crumble in its right. hands. Yeah, but the one thing about Ant Man is they repeatedly <coughs> contradict their, oh, their yeah, own premises so. through the whole thing. For example, the you know the compression field supposedly can only bring the bring the atoms closer together. All right. Which so I by that, there's no way during the climax of the film. That this guy is going to shrink smaller, shrink inside the atoms around him. That was about so quantum level. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, quantum has really become the, a, a key phrase for baloney. It really has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my thing with these. So I, I hope there's no Deepak Chopper fans out here. Yeah. Well, you're, boy, are you in the wrong room. <laughs> <laughs> now, my thing's where the, um, you know, the, the super power comes from the suit is how does the suit know where you end? Yeah. yeah, you know, There's like how well, come this part of your hair gets shrunk, or whatever you're wearing somehow gets shrunk, but not everything that you're attached, to, which usually involves right. the ground. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. let's. And if you talk about now, okay, so if we buy the we buy the bullshit that okay, so let's say his, he says, oh yeah, I can shrink down, but my mass doesn't change. Great, you're now a 200 pound man taking up this much space mm -hmm. when you land on something. It's you're going to have a big ass hole as you, you know, blow through things. Think about, okay, but... No, no small ass hole. 
A small asshole. Yeah. Small asshole. <laughs> Depends on the flexibility of the material. Some might yeah. draw down. The, guy, yeah. the guy who wrote it is the big asshole. That's the difference. Um, like, uh, I mean, no, no. But now let's think of it. Go back to the old days. Think about Henry Pym, Hank Pym. Because what was Hank's other thing? He could go the other way. Yeah. yeah. He, he was also a giant man. Right. So now you've got a two hundred. You got a two hundred pound guy who's three hundred feet tall. Now, like, please, what, 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 what they're saying in the comic book mythos is, is that he's taking matter from, or, or something from another dimension and either bringing in or shoving it out. So, as needed. As needed. As needed. It's, it's like the whole thing. Where's the Colossus? Where's the Colossus? The Higgs boson in the Higgs field is probably involved in there right. somewhere. Somewhere right. in there, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the Hulk. You know, where did the extra mass come from? From the Hulk. Or Colossus, for that matter. Yeah. Colossus. Where does he get all that metal? Yeah. Look yeah. at his pants. It's, you know, why, do <laughs> why, <laughs> what, why does the Hulk rip out of his pants? The comics code. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Then there's, uh, I mean, then there's the fact that they have him supposedly riding ants yeah. through the movie. Well. Yeah, ants can yeah ants can lift two hundred times their own yeah, weight, we, we but their weight we is to, just an ounce. Yeah, so not that big of a grand. Yeah, we just have to you know he, he, the, the bullshit doesn't work of of yeah. hanging onto his mass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's running across the guy's gun. You know, he did that. Why, why, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, at least at least at least with Ray Palmer and the Adam in the early comics, because he had some way of altering his weight. Ah, the C. The Atom is a totally different character because the guy who originally wrote the Atom was a physicist. And he tried really, really hard to come up with explanations of how Ray's power would work. And his power, he was, again, dealing with, you know, quantum level physics and, you know, doing all that stuff. But, you know, Ray would shrink temporarily sacrificing mass over the thing. But he could, at the moment of impact, but, see, Ray couldn't hit anybody when he was this small. He was that small. He never could have, he had to boom back up, but he could use that energy of the change, he would use the change energy as a, a strike force. So he would re you know, he would either shrink and use that energy shoved off. <laughs> so well, actually, as I recall, he had weight controls too. He could adjust his mass at any given size. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. but he tried real hard. It still doesn't work. I'll, okay, does I'll learn. Does I, this costume make my mass look big? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned something the, the other day that Think, of, think about our darling Scar Jar Scarlett Johansson a mm -hmm. moment. Uh, and watching her fighting style as mm -hmm. Black Widow. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the climb up the guy, wrap his legs, do the spin, and like that. And I thought, yeah, that's fun, that's operatic. No, that's an actual fighting style. That is oh, a yeah. Vietnamese mm -hmm. fighting style. All of the moves that she uses are actual trainable martial arts move that actually worked that way. I was really impressed by that. The yeah, fact that they yeah, had it's, actual it's fighters. Some, it's some really impressive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They needed something to offset the balonium quotient. Yeah, well, that, that's the great thing about Black Widow. She doesn't have a lot of balonium on her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like maybe some balonium on her. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can talk comic, you know, comic physics for, for eons about how none of it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can't see. Yeah. What, what's your notion on things that do the balonium and self-reference it because they know they're saying we know it's here we're doing it anyway. Um, an, an example would be the last year's new Danger Mouse, where you get things like the Baron's new uh, Frog's Head Flyer. It's made out of convenientum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or, oh, oh, or the announcer is questioning why Colonel K's hologram can act independently of Colonel K. Yes. <laughs> met, met, meta, meta storytelling, where they're aware that they're. Yeah. Hey, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, shut up. It's a, whole, <laughs> it's a wholehearted and honest um, favorite. Let's, uh, okay, let's go back to Avatar. We're talking about Bologna. Okay. You know. Gotta hate it. You know, pretty movie sucked so badly from a story. You know, like, so you guys didn't, you couldn't find a mining engineer and say, hey, this is our situation. You're a mining engineer. How would you, how would you mine for this stuff? Oh, we, 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 uh, we drill down and, and, and drill, you know, oh, we don't have access to the, to the, the surface above the, the, the object we want to observe. Mm -hmm. We'll just drill over here and go sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll do a shaft mines. You know, that'll be easy. We'll do that. You know, <coughs> yeah, the physics of, 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 of <laughs> the physics of, of Avatar is like, brain hurts, brain hurts! The biology gets interesting. The too. biology doesn't make a damn lick of sense. The, you know, everything on the planet is hexapodal except for the intelligent human-like animal. Which should be the most advanced. Yes. Who have US, well, and who have USB sex? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the USB plug problem, you know? You know is there, is there, is there a, a rotational? Not only that, they're USB compatible with all the other 
beings on this planet. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Well, if it evolved early enough, there could be very common templates in the, in the, the genetic toolbox. Yeah. You know, there's a gene that you can, you can transport from one to another. Uh, what the gene says is grow an eye. Mm -hmm. Everything about the details of how the eye works, mammalian, insect, you know, any of the 30 ways that eyes have evolved over time, doesn't matter. Whatever animal you put it in, when this thing says grow an eye, whatever the technology that animal is, it uses for an eye. That's where one of those... Because it goes grow. and looks it up. Yeah. It goes to the part of the genome. Some routines. Right. It goes to the genome that has the, oh, okay, I have to grow an eye? Oh, well, here's the eye construction. Okay, and yeah. then it built an eye. Yeah. It's sticking out of my armpit, but, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so, something like that gives at least a premise for saying that if it um, evolved early enough and passed down to people that... There could, you know, especially if they found uses for this communication right. between species um, to be reinforcing. Yeah. <laughs> and so far, only the sentients seem to be yes. able, able to use it that yeah. way. Yeah. Well, to be able to plug into the horse so, you know, he could ride down the road without having to think about it. Yeah, but only after sentients have developed. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you start at the pre Cambrian. Yeah, I mean, how, how did two horses use this? Yes. You know, how do two of the eagles use this kind mm -hmm. of thing? You know, especially in creatures that. Well, they can't. their species, it's probably obvious. Yeah. Um, it's how, how does an eagle and a horse use it productively? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that movie didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, none, none of it made any sense. The the the, the environments they built, the, the machinery they built, none of it make any sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, mountains full of obsidasium and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, you got yes. that. That's good. <laughs> right next to the, the ruby out of our Omar Khayyam you know, bowling reference. As if you had the big vault of box tops. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're going we're gonna to climb up one and take a peek. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when we were kids, we all watched, you know, we sat down with our parents on 7 o'clock and watched bowling for a great time, but we always wondered, why did my dad laughing at that point? That wasn't funny. You know, <laughs> you realize, oh, wait, it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't funny to a six year old. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what else is out there? What else happened? Um, well, let me see other. I'm really bad at my reading, so I don't anything know. from the new Star Wars. Oh yeah, Star we, we, we can have a whole lot of fun talking about the Star Wars universe. Um, there's another. Well, at least the Star Wars universe doesn't try to make any sense. No. They purposely don't make sense. You know, no. mixing oh. up terms and stuff like that. But none of that shit works. Lightsabers don't work. <laughs> don't work at all. Not even the, even the possibility of a lightsaber doesn't really work. They're cool. Yeah. I know but, something about, okay, analyzing the balonium of a lightsaber. I've been, I'm really not a Star Wars guy. I love, by the way, I love the new movie. Now, there are four good Star Wars movies. Um, yeah, I've seen all four of them. We're getting the Power Six, 12. Yeah. Um, and then it, I went back and I watched The Clone Wars. So, if you haven't watched The Clone Wars animated series, you like Star Wars universe, watch The Clone Wars yes. animated series. It is so, the storytelling is astoundingly good. I noticed something else about lightsabers they have no radiant heat. Because here's, a, you know, they're holding, you've got the blade, you've got the blade out there, they're only contact energy. There's no radiation. Because he's holding it next to people's faces, mm -hmm. you know, inches away, and the hair's not, you know, they're not burning hair, they're not burning skin. There's no radiant heat on, on a lightsaber. And he doesn't use a lightsaber to heat up Luke when he's freezing. Exactly. <laughs> but if he touches it, then you get into a problem. So it's like, whatever is making up that, I don't know if there's a containment field, or a magnetic field holding whatever the plasma is inside, that doesn't doesn't radiate out until you actually break the field. And restricts the length. And then, yeah, how do you restrict the, how do you have to restrict the length of an energy beam? Okay. That's another yeah, the radiation one. is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and how do you sort of... Just don't pay attention to leech laws. Yeah, and how do you, how do you sort of energy on anything that could cut through, you know, you know, we have no problem watching, you know, somebody walk up, shove a lightsaber into a big steel plate and, and, and do this and cut out a core of steel. You know, we go, yeah, okay, that's, you know, lightsaber's good. Mm -hmm. Where the hell are you getting all that energy from? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you got? Two, you know, a couple of double A's in the handle or something? <laughs> <laughs> unless you've got a unless you've got a microscopic nuclear reactor in the handle of that thing. Well, well how do you know the physics yeah. of that? Yeah. Well, I mean, physics is physics. You know, I mean, where do you get the energy? It's, it's tapping. Into it's magic. Star Wars is a magic universe as opposed yeah. to physics. Yeah. It, it, it taps into some force, uses nano batteries that Michio Kaku invented. In yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but if you can claim something like, you know, you've made zero point energy. Yeah, it's tapping into zero point energy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And even there, strictly speaking, there's problems, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, you know, where, where you get the energy is, is always a problem, and it, very few people wrestle with it because they have some kind of magic 
all the energy you need will come out of it. Right. Um, interestingly, uh, Patrick Rosfuth, um, wonderful fellow, has uh, in his books two or three different energy or different uh, magic systems, and I was charmed when I found out that in one of them, the laws of magic are not just things like the law of contagion and similarity, but it also included conservation.